Welcome to this edition of Investment Insights. Today we have Ray Fagan with us. Welcome, Ray. Thanks, Natasha. Currently, investors seem to be facing some challenging times with rising inflation, low bond yields and share markets being impacted by a number of factors. What should New Zealand investors be prepared for in the short term? That's right. 2022 has definitely been a challenging period for financial markets. As COVID-19 hit the world in 2020 and economies shut down as the public went into lockdown, we saw unprecedented economic support in the form of big spending by governments and record low interest rates set by central banks to try and ease the pain felt by society. This easy money combined with fractured supply chains as different countries resumed production at different times resulted in more money chasing fuel supplies and the high inflation readings that we've seen around the world. These high inflation readings have caused central banks around the world to begin to raise interest rates aggressively in order to try and stabilise prices. But a side effect of rising interest rates is that shares and companies whose value is based on future potential and growth opportunities fell in value. At the start of the year, we saw the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which added further stress to supply chains, as all of a sudden a number of Russian exports such as oil and gas, wheat, palladium and fertilisers were removed from available global supplies. This resulted in the prices of those commodities spiking, as well as driving a flight to safer assets, which exacerbated the market sell-off. With interest rates being raised aggressively, the risks of a global economic slowdown are increasing and the whispers of recession are getting louder. When we take this together with the fact that the Russian invasion of Ukraine is trending towards a longer, more drawn-out conflict, if there's one thing that investors should be prepared for in the short term, it's more volatility in financial markets. The investment managers in your investment options will look for opportunities in sectors that have been unduly sold down and are likely to benefit from economic conditions in the short to medium term. They will also be looking to avoid sectors that look expensive and are more exposed to cyclical downtrends. And what about in the longer term? Longer term, we expect that a number of the factors causing the recent market downturn will begin to iron themselves out. Data is showing that inventory levels at general retailers are increasing again, and supply chains will continue to reconnect as countries around the world get used to operating the post-pandemic environment. This should all help inflation return to lower levels and hopefully ease the pressure on central banks to raise interest rates, particularly as global growth begins to show signs of slowing down after the rush of pandemic stimulus. Because central banks have been raising interest rates in the face of what appears to be slowing global growth, the word recession has been bandied about a lot recently. Mercer does not assign a probability to the possibility of a recession. Different economies are at different points of the economic cycle and the corresponding central bank rate rises. However, it is fair to say that there is a reasonable probability that one or many of the OECD economies will fall into recession later this year or early next year. The real question is whether a recession is a short-lived affair or a long, deep recession. History has shown us that a deep recession would be damaging to financial markets as layoffs occur, driving consumers to curtail their spending. This lack of spending moves up the chain to companies reporting less sales and earnings, and ultimately a decrease in the value of those companies. However, unemployment currently remains at record lows in most developed countries around the world. This means that economies are expected to be able to absorb a more difficult economic environment, and also suggests that a recessionary contraction may be lighter than it otherwise would be. We think that opportunities remain in the market and more opportunities will continue to present themselves as we move through these challenging economic times. We recommend that investors hold a well-diversified portfolio which will allow them to take advantage of these opportunities as they arise. Traditionally, bonds have been seen as safe. Is that still the case? And what's impacting their performance? That's a great question, Natasha. It's true that bonds are generally considered a safer, less volatile asset. However, in recent periods, we've seen bonds exhibit more volatility than they usually would. To understand why, we need to look at bonds in the context of the market environment. Support from central banks such as 0% interest rates in the wake of the pandemic drove bond prices to record highs, resulting in low yields. That is, the return from interest and principal payments relative to the price of the bond. As central banks have increased interest rates in recent months, we have seen bond prices fall in value so that they yield a market rate reflecting those increased interest rates. Because the increase in interest rates hikes have been faster than market anticipated, we have seen a rapid devaluation in bond prices in response. It's because of this that our more conservative funds which hold a greater proportion of bonds have had a difficult period. The recent move by central banks to increase interest rates aggressively has been called front-loading by many market commentators. That means that by hiking rates hard and at the start of the rising interest rate cycle, later interest rate hikes won't have to be so aggressive as the heavy lifting has already been done. Bond prices have quickly adjusted to this front-loading, suggesting that the worst may be behind us. However, there is still a lot of uncertainty internationally regarding future interest rate hikes 
and the potential for surprises to negatively affect bond markets remain. That said, we still consider bonds to be an integral part of any well diversified portfolio. And the recent rise in yields means that investors now have the potential to earn more income on their bond holdings, increasing the relative attractiveness of the asset class. What are some of the sectors that have been performing well? Given the market environment, assets which have performed well have offered some form of defence against inflation. For instance, commercial property which have rent increases linked to the rate of inflation, or infrastructure assets which have a strong pricing power for their services. Commodities performed notably well during 2021 as economies began their post-pandemic reopenings and prices were further boosted earlier this year as Russia's invasion of Ukraine threatened a number of key commodities. In the rising interest rate environment, we have also seen defensive, quality companies with strong cash flows and dividend payments perform well relative to wider equity markets. Thank you for watching this edition of Investment Insights.